Oh. So uh, these compositions, we take a step back. You pretty much have big wombo combo ability from both of them. I'm going to give slight edge to game talents, but it's really going to be there's early kill threat with Maokai with that twisted advance. Now looking at Gimgoon. Yeah, Gimgoon actually in trouble here as well, who gets the equilibrium strike off, flashes, but there's a the flash twisted advance, and Gimgoon pushed back towards his creep wave. And it's a matter of time before he's taken him down, and MLXG gets the first blood. And just very telegraphed straight from the beginning, this MLXG has actually slipped up underneath him. Now that he's caught on this pink ward, they're going to collapse on this. Well, there's the ghost already here, as Wuchang already taken more than half of his health in damage. MLXG will be able to get this kill on his own, but can't get over the wall. Actually gets it with the red buff, and then ults over anyway, just to celebrate the victory. Just frankly, really sloppy from Wuchang. Does have, of course, the obvious item advantage. In the extra couple of Doran's rings, and MLXG looking for a dive. Onslaught of Shadows comes in, and everyone on top of Republic. There's the Emperor's Divider. Xiaohu actually stunned underneath this turret. Is going to die. Mid lane is traded for the moment, but MLXG now in trouble as Wushong flashes on top. Collateral damage not connecting, but is able to pick it up with the smoke screen. And GT get a two for one. So just very greedy from Xiaohu Orange. Xiaohu is moving down there as well. It's because they have excellent... Uh, well, that's ghost popped here as well. So Onslaught of Shadows comes down. He has caught Pentacue this time. MLXG going to be able to lock down the kill. There's the flash from Savoki, so they only get the one. And there's a dive going down towards the top side of the map here as well. They're trying to work out who wants to go in first. It's going to be Wuxiang who manages to pick up the kill. So traded dives on both sides of the map. Well executed. We'll see whether the town have the Vladimir insurance this time around. And we talked about how there should be a straight upgrade for oh RNG, but... Goodness. Once again, fantastic out of Sovoki. His pillar placement is 10 out of 10 as Pentakey is going to be able to lock down that kill. And that that was... I don't, I don't even feel like that was MLXG really making a massive mistake. That pillar was Teleport from Looper as well. I believe they might be able to catch out this bottom lane here at the same time. Everyone collapsing. Pentakey is going to be the first one to fall. Xiaohu picks up the kill. Sovoki now in trouble as the exhaust goes down onto Uzi. Another fantastic pillar, but there's the mystic shot and Uzi locks down the kill. So the bottom lane definitely dead. Republic looking to try and answer as MLXG makes it here in time. No, MLXG looking to try and grab it. Cinderlings go over to the horse. Swishan quick draws away, and MLXG locks down the red. So just bullied there. Republic might need to be careful. Knows that there are multiple members here over this side, and the Chaos Storm goes down. Shahu throws down the heel, but the flash comes in from Republic. Oh my god, everyone managing to collapse, and Shahu somehow survives. Yeah, eventually gets some assistance from his uh, upper jungle right there. Just running up. Here comes Looper. Yep, Pinkwalk goes down, Looper comes in, and here's the squeeze. Teleport coming in from GT as well, but a little bit later, and you can see the mid laner's moving up top. Gimgoon now wants to try and help out his team, but MLXG with a really nice flank. Pentacue flashes over the top, Wuchang in there as well as Savoki is going to be the first to fall. There's the Emperor's Divide, Wuchang caught between a rock and hell of a lot of hard places, as that's a triple kill instantly for Uzi. RNG now could move towards the Baron, could kill the rest of RNG, we'll s uh, sorry, GT, we'll see what they decide to do. So we said that uh, RNG were setting up the Triangle Vision, looking to siege on the mid-2 tower, though, hold on. Yep, there's the Chaos Storm, doing a lot of damage actually to the backline here, as Gimgoon is going to survive for the moment. Xiaohu falls down to Republic's Chaos Storm, and he grabs a second kill into MLXG. Now looking for Uzi, the auto attack almost went in, as the Death Ray did not do the work, but that saves the Baron completely. And almost the fight, honestly, as Looper almost falls down. He's getting aggressive. He's running out of mana. As now Gimgoon wants to try and get in on this. Death rate is going to find Marta for the second tick, but not Uzi. Now RNG have to go home. This could be disaster if they don't play it perfectly. They can see GT making their way over. Marta needs to stand behind someone as Looper's trying to give him a target. He's taking a lot of damage, and the Baron is actually going to help out as Looper almost completely dead. As there's Gimgoon, grabs it with the Transcendent Blades as Xiaohu has to escape. And it's exactly like you said, Frosco. I mean, this is not how oh, our... Ultimate, we're going to go back to farming and uh, denying and placing Vision. So the Vision War commences. Well, there's the ultimate, actually, as Savoki's going to get thrown back. Uses the flash, and there's the teleport from Gimgo, and Wuxiang has to flash, but Ten Pentacue's taken down Mata. Now MLXG riding amongst this fight as Gimgoon's over the side. Xiaohu taking a lot of damage as Pentacue flashes on top of him. The exhaust is there, but Xiaohu gets himself to relative safety. Looper now riding amongst it, but Game Talents are chasing this RNG roster. You can see Republic closing in from the side. Looper is going to fall down. Oh my god, they're able to take down the bottom lane somehow, but Looper will eventually fall. Gimgoon going nuts, and Uzi, the last man standing, flash from Republic! And they get the ace. And the reason why is because look, Onslaught of Shadows, it just came back up.
Like, RNG chose to fight. We said that Xiaohu, he will swoop and scoop you any day of the week. And I'm not going to call it a bait, because mm -hmm. it technically kind of was a pick, but it ends up baiting and costing his team, because it turns into a big 5v5, and RNG don't have the Onslaught of Shadows, which is massive for their composition. Oh my god, that ba that three-man Baron. ...and could feasibly look to 2-0 RNG. Whoa, Republic is going to get collapsed on massive ultimates already out of RNG, but Republic is going to fall. The Zonyas is not enough. And that's MLXG locking down the kill. Savoki's going to fall next, and now they're toppling them like chess pieces. Wushang will make it underneath his turret. They do manage to get the GA, as Mata possibly will fall down. MLXG not going to be able to find it. Gimgoon now as well as Pentacue's going to collapse. Xiaohu picks up the kill. Now Gimgoon going to fall to the GA, and he's going to complete the set as RNG run over the top of Game Talents. It took a long time, but they found their engage, and this will be the game. Caster curses, I'm setting up Game Talents, rewarding them for making it this far. But he's, of course, the lowest level member. I have a feeling that RNG will have enough time. They've got the minions. The Nexus turrets both fallen down. The Nexus will be the next one to go. RNG with a very big test on their hands in game number two, after their loss in game one, are eventually victorious. So their decision-making still very questionable throughout the series. They managed to keep it together to smooth over the issues that happened in the first game and make it count.